KPMG. Certainly there is a division in hip hop, the same division that exists from the civil rights era to the black liberation era, from the black liberation era to the hip hop movement, uh, from old school quote unquote artists to quote unquote new artists. From me as a 37 year old man to my 18 year old, 16 year old and 14 year old children, there is a division and that division is generally a reflection of a break in continuity. Now, listen to what I'm saying. I'll be brief because I know that we're restricted yeah, we in time. Have to. Now, where is the, here is the problem. Something happened to our elders. Maybe a post-traumatic civil rights disorder. Maybe a post-traumatic Jim Crow order disorder. That created a, 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 a climate that made it such that we were almost ashamed and beaten to tell the stories that happened. These stories that if these young children heard in the context of the bravery, the selflessness, the sacrifice, they would say, that's gangster. Mm. But in the absence of that connect, what we have is children doing what I did as a young man without a father. Learning to be a man with other young boys. So where we were masculine, we weren't men. So this disconnect is a reflection, this, this is a reflection of a lack of continuity and it behooves us to repair that aspect. And I'll go into that as other questions reveal themselves. Thank you. Where did you change, Paris, in giving the power to about hip hop? I would change a couple of things. One thing would be the, uh, uh, I would change some history. Uh, that history being unfortunately for her and many of the other artists like Busy B and, you know, uh, uh, just so many, Melly Mel, who I sit on panels with often, uh, they were in the now, the moment of what was happening. So they could not uh, imagine that this would be a billion dollar industry as mm -hmm. it were. And as a result, were, um, uh, unable to, and un to to set up uh, infrastructure, to set up the uh, institutions that would have allowed for the things that we're actually meeting about now to not happen. Uh, so as a result, it ended up getting sold off. And it's not, you know, it's it's no fault of their own as much as it, that they were in the moment of the situation. I would also change the fact that there was no support structure presently, that there were artists like myself, uh, wise, intelligent, uh, so I can name, 10 artists over my head easily that you should be aware of, that your children should be listening to, uh, that you're totally unaware of. And we're working very hard to do the exact thing that you're asking us to do, but you're unaware of us. And we need that support structure because without it, we can't do the job that it is that you want us to do. So those are things that I would change. Let me say without question, and I want to be clear, I'm M. Y. Orr, and I'm saying this, that these rappers are cowards. Right. They're not men. Right. They are not the queens and black women that we expect them to be. The fact of the matter is that these rappers are trying to be the personification of the man they imagine themselves being. Mm. They're looking to uh, emphasize their masculinity, their strength, to be a powerful and a position of powerlessness. Mm. So you use the words and terms that you can find that sound rough. Yeah, that, no. Mm. That, uh, you know what I mean? That B. These are things you say because it sounds hard. But see, there's no value system present that shows that what real strength is. They don't understand that real strength is going out and, you know, the, the march and, 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 and not know whether you're going to come home that night mm. because you're marching for somebody's freedom that isn't even born yet. That doesn't, that that's, hasn't translated. And again, that goes back to what I was saying about passing on the proper information, right? Okay. So what happens is, is, and this is a very important point, when corporations involve themselves into a thing, when marketers begin to sell, they sell on, a, 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 generally with entertainment, it's the, uh, the, the bad boy image, they're either young, dumb, sexy, mean, 
you know, or a little crazy. That's, they can sell those things easily. Because if you look at any artist, they fit in that format. So they place hip hop in that format and they easily can sell those things to you and your children. Listen to songs like Lollipop. What is that song? Well, you know what the song is about. But what is the song targeting? Your daughter. Because you don't try to kill a woman that way. And so it's a constant struggle to misinform, miseducate, and, 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 and send our children all to the wrong path, such so that now you can't keep your daughter out of jeans, so you can't keep your son out of jeans, so skin tight that it look like you're wearing leggings. <laughs> so, this is the device. This is the device. When I hear some of the criticisms levied on hip hop now and the youth now, I feel as though I'm listening to a father criticize a child that he did not raise. You know, there's a culpability here. I mean, we need to be a people that are taking accountability for what we're doing. Self-accountability. What haven't we done? Why do I just, my child does not walk around with his pants hanging in when he do a morning? Because I'm active in this process. Why aren't we active in our process? We're being professional disattenders. We're dis you know what a professional disattender is? Does anybody know? Well, a cab driver is a professional disattender. A, 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 uh, uh, the dude that works the elevator is a professional disattender. Somebody that does a job, that while they're doing that job, you can continue your, your conversation as if they're not there. This is what we are as parents. You don't even go outside. Grandma's not on the front porch anymore. You're not even outside, right? But you send your children out there to play. Mm -hmm. And then when they come back twisted and turned around, you say, oh, look at these kids. Do I feel some shame? Yeah, I feel some shame. You know what shame I feel? The shame of not being a part of their lives. Thank you. Let's get motivated. Thank this hip hop is a result, and this, this hip hop is, is ours. Thank Thank you. You. I'm not just talking as a rap artist. I said, like, my oldest son going to college. Mm -hmm. The first song that I came out with was called Y'all Should All Get Lynched. Yes. Who dropped the I put that song out, you know why? Because I was so mad. Watching my children struggle. And only thing I can look to is these rappers, these cowards running around here singing these funny songs about some nonsense that they don't even go through. And then they, they put it on my children, right? While their children go to some private school and get driven home in some SUV into a gated community. But at the end of the day, I can't be but so mad about something that I'm not involved in myself in. So I went from the place to the space that I occupy to be involved in. The question you have to ask yourself as we leave these halls, are we working from the place and the space we occupy to do the job we need to do to rectify the situation that we're facing? Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead. Okay.